Well, hello, good people. Welcome back to Comfy Y101. I think we're at part four now. Today, I wanted to talk specifically about the case sampler. Some of you pointed out that I didn't really talk about it, and that was for good reason, mainly because the case sampler consists of quite a few things that I felt needed its own video. Specifically, we're going to talk about CFG steps and the samplers. Now, before we begin, I just wanted to point out how appreciative I am of all the positive feedback. And if I'm being honest, I was a little hesitant to create this series of videos because they typically don't do well on my channel, mainly because of the length and people tend to skip around and that really kills my watch time. So if this series is helping you out and you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is like the video, engage in the comments, watch it through, and most importantly, let me know in the comments if you are getting value out of this series. Now enough of the rant, let's get into it. If you've been following along, you know this is our basic workflow. I'm going to quickly review the process with you. and I'm going to use a baking analogy so things make sense to you. So creating images is like baking cookies. You have your prompt, which represents the ingredients. The empty latent is sort of like the baking sheet. Once you have all the ingredients together, you need to put it somewhere to cook. And in terms of image generation, that's what the empty latent is. Now, when it comes to the case sampler, there are three parts to it. We have CFG, which I correlate with temperature. Steps, the amount of time it will take to bake these cookies. In the sampler, we can correlate that to the type of oven we're going to use. As you know, there could be different types of ovens to bake your cookies. Once we have all those things, the end result are some scrumptious cookies, or in our case, an output image. So what you see on the screen is an XY plot. I have settings for CFG and steps, and we're going to run through how this works. I'm not going to go through all these settings. I'm going to leave a link to where you can view them for yourself at home. That being said, let's start with CFG. CFG stands for classifier free guidance. And the general understanding of CFG is that the higher it is, the more it'll follow your prompt. And I put a little asterisk beside it because it really doesn't mean that in a literal sense. And you'll see that as we progress in the video. At the lower end of the scale at a CFG at two, you see with this image, the prompt is a cute puppy in a doghouse. With this image, it looks underdeveloped or undercooked. But as we increase it to CFG4, you see the contrast, the colors, the saturation start to pop just a little bit more. Now it does still look underdeveloped because we're only using five steps. We'll talk about steps in a minute. But if we increase the CFG to 20, you see that the image is burnt, right? The details are gone. The colors are all over the place. There's major artifacting. And so we can balance this out with steps. If we go back to CFG2 and we increase the steps, we start to see the overall image developing more accurately to the prompt, right? This low of a CFG, we're not going to get a lot of contrast in color, but overall in terms of composition and prompt adherence, we're pretty much getting everything we want by the time we get to 20 to 30 steps. By increasing the CFG to four or six, so four is just below it. We see at 25 and 30 steps, the contrasting color is much more rich, much more deep and better saturation. Here it is at CFG 6, 25 and 30 steps. If we look at the range from say 4 to 8, which is usually a good starting point for CFG, you'll notice this area here. There's very little change in terms of the composition as we get closer to roughly around 25 to 30 steps in this area. And if we increase the steps to all the way up to 50, you'll notice that there really isn't too much change. Maybe in small details there are changes, but overall the composition, the way the puppy looks, the make of the doghouse, they all look very similar. And this is something called convergence. There's a point in the generation process where you're not going to get a lot of changes in the details. Now samplers have something to do with that, which we'll talk about soon. But overall, the goal here is to find a sweet spot. It's sort of like a balancing act between CFG and steps. 
When you increase the CFG high, let's say 12 to 18, you start to see again this burn effect happening and even the details start to get a little funky, right? You also start to see an increase in saturation and contrast. The other factor is it's like, let's say with CFG 6 and 30 steps, you're getting what you want, but you're still not happy and you start increasing that CFG. It's like holding down someone and saying, give me more, give me more, but not providing more details in the prompt or context in the image. And what tends to happen at higher CFG, it's going to start to hallucinate extra details. So here we see this sort of like a soccer ball here, another type of ball here. We've got flowers. And as we go further up in steps, we see it starts to hallucinate other details, right? So it's like you're forcing the model to give you more details that aren't actually there. And if we zoom in closer here, you start to see some artifacting around the eyes. Again, contrasting color starts to get a little too vivid, too contrasty. We start to see things like this where the shading is off. This is at 20 CFG at 45 and 50 steps. And although in terms of composition and details, it looks okay, it's just a little too much color and contrast and it's like we're overdoing it at this point. So again, the whole goal is finding that balance between CFG and steps. But I did want to quickly talk about samplers here. Now with samplers, things get a little complicated. That's why the suggestions from the developers really help. But in this example, I've got four samplers, Euler, DPM++ 2M, Euler A, which is ancestral, DPM++ 2M, SDE. We've got steps between 20 to 50. Now, if you recall earlier on, I talked about convergence where after a point, the details don't really change all too much. Maybe in smaller details, but overall, the images start to look similar. And part of the reason why that happens is the sampler. With samplers, there are two main things that happen. Do they converge or don't they? So if we look at Euler and DPM++ 2M, these two samplers are very similar. DPM++ 2M is sort of like a new version of Euler. And the sampler calculates the information in very different ways. Again, if we correlate it to baking, it's like putting it in a different kind of oven. They all do the same thing, but they may function a little bit differently. So if you notice in these images here, generally speaking, they all look very similar. But if you look at these little pipes, for example, there could be slight differences. But between these two samplers, for the most part, they kind of look the same. There really isn't too much change. So it's safe to say these two samplers converge after a certain point. Again, typically after 30 steps. When we look at Euler Ancestral and DPM++ 2M SDE, any ancestral sampler as well as these SDE samplers, they do not converge. Meaning there's always going to be a change in the image with every step. So if we look at the details on the ground between here, here, and here, as well as down here, those details are going to change all the time. Now, even some of the smaller details in the car are going to change quite a bit. So between these images, there's always this constant change. Non-converging samplers can be great in terms of creativity. You can get different details, especially with very creative artistic forms. Now you might have noticed some artifacting by this particular sampler. The default setting that I used was a CFG of 6, and this is at 20 steps. So this is another factor to consider with certain samplers. Some samplers require either more steps or more CFG in order for the image to be fully cooked. So at a CFG of 6, we see at 20 steps, it's still underbaked. As we look at 25, now 30, we still have that artifacting, 35, 40, we start to see go away a little bit. Even at 50, if you really look, there is some slight artifacting here. So we'd have to bring our steps up probably to about 60, 70 steps to get rid of that artifacting. Or we increase that CFG to 7, 8, maybe 9, and find that sweet spot in terms of steps. So not all samplers are made equal.
As I said, if you use the logic in baking, certain samplers cook the image in different ways. Now, when it comes to flux, it's a little bit different. It doesn't use CFG. It uses something called distilled classifier free guidance or distilled CFG. Generally speaking, it follows the same rules, but it's treated slightly different in the back end. With SDXL, the way CFG works is that theoretically it's a two step process. So, again, with SDXL, the higher you go with the CFG, it's supposed to follow your prompt a little closer, right? But the second step of that too is it considers the negative prompt. So, the higher you go in CFG, the higher it'll navigate away from those negative prompts. Now, with Flux, it doesn't do that. There's no need for negative prompts. So, there's only one step in the process. With distilled CFG, generally it follows the same rules, except the range is lower. The recommended settings for flux in terms of distilled CFG is anywhere from 2 to 3.5 within this range here. And the lower you go, the more it has that photorealism. The higher you go in the scale, it tends to look sort of hyper-realistic. In terms of steps, typically 20 to 30 is ideal in most cases. Now you'll see similarities in terms of results. At a low CFG, you see that the image looks very underdeveloped. As we look at 1.5, we already see a significant increase in details. Once again, for creative works of art like abstract or illustrations, sometimes using one and one and a half can get you some pretty decent results. Now, if you look at the flowers of the dress here, as we increase the distilled CFG, again, we start to see those details become more prominent. Even here, we sort of see a hand forming. It's not until distilled CFG 2.5, we start to see that hand come out. And I would even say in terms of details by 2, 2.5, the details already look great. And as we look at 3 and 3.5, three and we see that increase in contrast, saturation, and color. And the thing with flux here, as we look at 4, the aggressiveness of the distilled CFG is a lot more heavier compared to SDXL, where you can really go in small increments and only see small differences. Where with Flux, you have to be really careful in terms of how high you put your distilled CFG. Now, whether you use SDXL or Flux, the goal here is to get the results of the prompt in your image, and you have to find that balance, right? So in this example here, there are a few things in the prompt that I'm looking for to tell me the best setting. Number one is this wide inch screen. Number two is the text that says, I love AI. Number three is a coffee cup. Number four is a mobile phone that should be on the left of the desk. And number five is a lamp at the corner. Corner. Between CFG 1 to 2, 20 to 30 steps, I don't see all those factors in these images here. As we go further up, it's not until, let's see here, distilled CFG at 3.5. Now I have all the elements that I'm looking for. We have the text, I love AI, the widescreen monitor, the lamp, coffee cup, mobile phone. Now we do have an extra cup here, but hey, <laughs> so by looking at these images, I can see for that particular prompt, we have 20 steps with a distilled CFG of 3.5 as my ideal setting to get all those elements. All the other settings, regardless of steps or distilled CFG, did not accomplish what I want. Some came very close, but what was tricky for this prompt was that lamp. So out of all these images, it was this particular setting that got me exactly everything I wanted. Of course, it depends on the prompt and the model you're using. It's always going to be different every time. So I know I've gone over this before, but again, I just want to remind you all, what can we do with this information? So if we go to Civit AI and we want to download an SDXL model. So let's say we want to download Epic Realism. This is a great SDXL model for photorealism. We download it. And then if we look down under the notes of the developer, we see some suggestions in terms of prompts, negative prompts, and just below we also see a section for steps. He recommends 20 or higher and even makes a note that if you see artifacts, use higher steps, so 25, 30 and higher. In this case for CFG, a good starting point is 5. 
But if you go higher in the CFG scale, he notes that it'll lose its realism. In terms of sampler, he recommends the SDE variant or any DPM sampler. If we look at a flux fine tune model, here's pixel wave. This is probably one of my favorite fine tunes for flux. We see here on this line, he's DPM++ 2M SGM uniform 30 steps. So it's very handy to start with the developer notes in terms of where to start. And then you can experiment with different settings and samplers. Now you might be thinking, dude, you didn't talk about schedulers. Well, I didn't really want to get into the technical details. Like I said, the sampler is sort of like the oven. Now, when it comes to text to image, this is the mathematical calculations that happens in the background. So I like to think of these samplers as the type of mathematical calculation. So you have multiplication, division, add, subtract, whatever, right? But the scheduler is sort of like the formula. How are those calculations made? And we don't have to get all too technical about it. Like I said, the best thing you can do is check the developer notes of the model. So for example, a good all around sampler and scheduler is Euler simple or Euler beta. The sampler and scheduler combination is like a safe bet for both SDXL and Flux. And by the way, PP here means plus plus. So you might see in those developer notes, the actual plus symbols that also means PP here. Okay. For Flux, again, Euler is good too, but another good one is days and I believe SGM uniform for the scheduler. Now, some samplers take a bit longer for the generation time, a difference of a few seconds. So just be aware of that. But if I'm being honest, in the early days of SD 1.5 and SDXL, I think the whole sampler topic was kind of blown out of proportion where it really comes down to the small details in convergence. You could test these things till you're blue in the face. Now with Flux, certain samplers don't work. They might turn out blurry. They might come out artifacts they might come out black or gray. So always go with what the developer is suggesting. Okay, I know that was a lot to take in, so thanks for sticking with me. And I don't expect you to understand this all in one sitting. The best thing for you to do is to experiment with everything you'll learn today. But ultimately, it comes down to sort of finding your own style and what settings works for you. This is not something that you're just going to learn in an instant. It's going to take a lot of trial and error. Now, I hope that made some sense to you all. As always, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments or if things are still kind of jumbled in your head, let me know in the comments. Now, if this happens to be your first time on my channel and you don't understand what I'm talking about, make sure to check out the other three videos in this Comfy UI 101 series. And coming up next, we're finally going to work on a basic Flux workflow and look at the comparisons between SDXL and Flux. Until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.